just want to make sure you guys are all revved up, ready to go. All right. Um, certainly a great night celebrating 100 years at Tiger Stadium. Um, you know, I thought the atmosphere was uh, tremendous. Proud of our team, um, how they, you know, just kept fighting. Um, you know, they believed they were going to win the football game. I think you probably heard that from, you know, many of the comments uh, from the players that were interviewed after the game. They had a belief that um, they were prepared and they were going to find a way to win the game. And so, you know, um, in, in many ways, the mental is to the physical is two is to one. And when you believe you're going to uh, come out and win these games, um, you just keep fighting. And, and closing out games uh, is, is part of what you need to do. Um, and they closed it out and game tying drive, converted two fourth downs, overcome, you know, uh, some third and tens. Um, you know, again, the defense um, held Ole Miss to um, no touchdowns in the second half and in overtime. And if you told me going into the game, they won't score a touchdown in the second half. And if it went to overtime, they wouldn't score a touchdown. I'd say we've got a pretty good chance of winning the football game. So, you know, uh, exciting night. Um, and, and, and because of that, we had some offensive players of the week. I want to mention uh, Braden Swinson again for the ter third time uh, has been honored in, in this league by being the defensive lineman of the week. Uh, Whit Weeks was the defensive player of the week, 18 tackles, a sack, a, a TFL, and a forced fumble. Uh, and then uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, 337 yards passing, three touchdowns, uh, and he leads the SEC in passing with, uh, with 18 touchdowns. So, um, again, just a uh, great night, uh, big victory, and, and only our second with, with many more games in the SEC to come. So we have to keep it in perspective. And the perspective is now we've got to go on the road consecutive weeks against a, a very solid uh, Arkansas team, uh, a team that, as you know, historically over the past four years, uh, we've played games where we've been decided by three points or less. So I um, have a great deal of respect for, for Sam Pittman, uh, what he's done, uh, the, the way this team is playing. Great victory last week against uh, Tennessee, they had the week off, obviously, the week before. Um, but, uh, you know, again, an annu annual battle for the boot. Um, and, again, uh, this football team, um, you know, is led by Taylor Green, the quarterback, big, physical, can run, uh, makes plays with his arm and leg, legs. Uh, you know, uh, again, I, I think the, the balance on offense, uh, 480 yards in total offense, uh, rushing, passing. Uh, they lead the SEC in third down conversions. Uh, this, is a, this is a formidable offense. Uh, love the tight end, um, Lucas, the big offensive line. They work well together. And again, that's Coach Pittman's specialty is the offensive line. Uh, defensively, uh, I think that that's, the, the, to me, uh, I think they've done a great job defensively. Uh, they're physical up front, big and physical. Uh, Landon Jackson, uh, you know, I think many of you know him, played here at LSU. Great motor. I mean, the guy just plays hard. He's got, um, he's a three-year starter there. He is kind of the energy on that defense. Um, but again, a really well-designed, fundamentally sound. Uh, they run to the football, play with a lot of energy. This is going to be a great challenge for us and, and one where, you know, we'll have to play well on the road at uh, Fayetteville. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Right here, Coach. Uh, you mentioned on Saturday maybe your frustration earlier in the season by knowing what this team's capable of but not being able to finish. Does this unlock anything for your team in terms of being able to see when you do X, you get to see, you know, Y and Z type of thing? Yeah, I think we're at that point now where, you know, they've set a standard of, of how to play this game. You know, to me, this has always been about, you know, your, your preparation is one thing, but you have to flip the switch to performance. You know, you can prepare well and you can look great in practice and you can do all the things, but you have to then flip that switch to performance. And I think that this was the first night where we saw, you know, the mental, the physical, uh, the technical and the tactical, um, you know, all of them come together as one. And, and that's the standard in which we, we need to play. Now, um, now 
they have to think right about Arkansas, you know, and putting that all together uh, each and every week because that's what's going to be required for them uh, to continue to have uh, positive outcomes. Yeah, Brian, I know after the game you were asked about the Aaron Anderson touchdown and you praised the offensive line, but if we could go back and talk about that play, you needed five yards or the game's over for all intents and purposes and you took a shot. Was the play call to take a shot? Was it something Garrett saw in, in that moment? If you would maybe just walk us through what happened there. Yeah, so he had other options there. Um, they're, they're in many of the offensive structured plays in those situations, as you can imagine, um, He's going to have an opportunity to get the ball out quickly if something presents itself. He was working through the third piece of the progression, and, and it's Anderson coming all the way across from the slot to the backside hash and just anticipated um, you know, where he was going to be uh, and, and threw the ball expecting him to be there. That's just trusting... You're teaching, trusting that you know that guy is going to be there. The, the, he's thrown that ball so many times that you just let it go. Uh, he wasn't there. He wasn't open yet. He threw him open is what we say. And, you know, that's just a, a confidence level uh, that he had in the route that has been run so many times. And uh, it was probably uh, one, two, that would be three in his progression, you know, moving through it. Hey, Coach, um, with the running game, what was Ole Miss doing that made things sort of difficult in that respect for you guys offensively? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, running game, again, is about five guys on the offensive line, the tight end, the wide receivers, the running back, and the quarterback all together in lockstep. And the success or the lack of success – we had 23 running plays, and, and we break down the running plays as a successful running play is four yards or more or a first down in a critical down. For example, if it's third and one, you get a yard, that's a successful play. So we had nine successful plays, ten unsuccessful plays, and then what we call four plays, which were a wash. In other words, um, they were 3.8 yards or 3.9 yards, and we considered them a wash on those plays. The unsuccessful plays were across the board. Um, it was not pushing and cracking a safety. Uh, it was the quarterback not getting us into the right play. It was the running back not reading the, the, the correct hole and hitting it the right way. It was the tight end not reaching the end instead of blocking it off and not allowing it to stretch on the outside zone. My point being, it's, it's a little bit of everything. We're not in sync with all of our guys coming together as one in the running game. And we just have to do a better job coaching it across all the, the fronts. In other words, our tight end coach, our running back coach, our offensive line coach, uh, wide receiver coaches, quarterback coach, they all have to do a better job. We all have to do a better job to be more successful. We want about a 65% successful rate in the run game. We're not there, and we've got to get there to be the, the kind of offense we want to be. I kind of asked you about this after the game. I'm just wondering, is there a person or persons that's kind of helping to unlock this performance, this execution from the defense? Is it as simple as Zai being available and you know, that kind of sets everyone else into place? Or is it just great individual effort when needed? Are we talking about one particular person or the entire defense? Everybody seems to be making plays. Like the front yeah. are making plays. Obviously, the linebackers are making plays. Yeah. I'm just wondering how much that kind of is it a holistic approach or is one or two people really setting all that in motion? This is the constant application of a defensive, um, you know, system, uh, a process um, that, that has required – um, our players to really think right about what they're doing and, and doing their job every single play. And it's, it's painstaking. It's, it's work. You have to – it takes time. And, you know, with a whole new defensive staff, a whole new teaching, uh, a communication system that we would have loved to have been here in week one. Uh, it's just taken time for it to really kind of, um, you know, get to the grassroots, if you will, 
with everybody. And, you know, the, the tactical and technical pieces um, are so much better. We're, we're assignment correct. But what was, what was really evident was from a game plan standpoint, it was so crucial, and I mentioned this earlier, first down was absolutely crucial in this game, and we were really good on the early downs. Um, and if the ball did get out on the perimeter, um, we were tackling it. We didn't do that last year. The ball, we didn't tackle anybody last year. And so the fundamentals of playing good defense were in place. And, and then we were able to do things when we got into predictable down and distances and we sacked the quarterback more times than he's been sacked at any time. And that's really the signs of good defense. Hey, Coach, uh, right here. Um, during the game, the offensive line had a tough task of going up against this uh, Ole Miss uh, front seven that led the country in sacks. And the offensive line held, held, did not allow a single sack. Was there a difference in scheme in terms of the block, a pass blocking scheme, or was it the same the whole entire way? No, we're really good at that. <laughs> we're, we're exceptional pass blockers. We need to be exceptional run blockers, too, and we're capable of doing that. But we need some help. You know, as I mentioned, you know, we, we, that offensive line, um, you, you know, needs some assistance on some perimeter uh, things. They need some assistance when, you know, we're running a, a read play and we pull the ball out of the quarterback's hands. Um, we, we need some help here. Um, and now they're culpable too, uh, but they're outstanding pass blockers. And, and we are capable of being – better in the run game and and that's what we're gonna we're rolling our sleeves up and and we're getting after it every day in practice and the guys are committed to it and there's there's more out there for us coach just curious does this situation remind you of 2022 when you beat alabama at home big overtime game fans stormed the field emotional victory and then you've got to go to arkansas and do, do you bring it up with your team as far as how difficult it is, you know, from what, from that game situation to, to this one? Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're pretty transparent in talking about, you know, what the current situation is relative to how they think. And, you know, I, I think that football team was a younger team relative to experience. This team has got some experience in terms of um, – Overall, they've been through it, and, and they know what it looks like. Um, but that doesn't mean that everybody um, understands how to think about it. So we'll talk about how they need to think about uh, going into this week in their preparation. Um, so it will be a conversation that takes place. And then this is where you lean on Nussmeyer, who's been through it, and, and Weeks, who's been through it, and Greg Penn, and guys that have you know, taken this trip and been part of it. And now that's where you ask your veterans to really step up. Brian, I'm, obviously last week a, a, a lawsuit kind of was reported uh, from Greg Brooks. Yeah. Do you have any uh, comment or response to the accusations of negligence in that, within that against you and your staff? No, I mean, you, I, I think it's well known and, and we've talked about the love that we have, our entire team, for Greg Brooks. Uh, you know, uh, a leader, um, beloved by his teammates, um, and, and we'll continue to have that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, lawsuits come out in our culture, in our society every day, and, and it's, it is what it is, but it doesn't change the way we feel about Greg. And, and our support is gonna be there. Um, we, we hope and, and pray for only the best for him uh, but when it comes to lawsuits, our kids, um, players, coaches, um, we just really focus on Greg and, and, and hope and pray that um, he's one, you know, he's one and, and the, the guy that we focus on and, and we stay away from anything that has legal ramifications. The coach over here, uh, two questions. Uh, first question, uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, obviously coming in through clutch at the end with the uh, touchdown pass to set up overtime and obviously the game winner. Um, also just for him, just to separate, because he likes to take the deep shots and the big plays, just kind of separate him trying to also run maybe four or five yards, kind of take what the defense gives you and just kind of balancing that 
with Garrett. And then the second question is uh, Corey Raymond and just his impact in the, in the cornerback room and how that group has improved and what you've seen from that room. Well, you know, again, I, I think, you know, Garrett needs to, you know, like any other player, continue to grow. And, and I think, you know, within the structure of the, the defensive um, coverages that he's going to see, uh, he saw a lot of two trail match coverage, which, you know, I think we saw Joe Burrow last night get man coverage and the whole field opened up and, and he took off. I mean, I'm not saying Garrett Nussmeyer is Joe Burrow, but, you know, those openings do occur. And, and you know, I think he saw that last night and uh, the other night. And, and that's going to be part of his development and, and seeing that he can run, in fact, will run. Doesn't mean we're going to put in a – you know, a quarterback run package for him. Um, but when the opportunity arises, he knows that he's capable of doing that and helping his football team. So I think that was a great learning experience for him. Um, you know, I think, you know, the turnovers themselves, I, I think he would tell you that, you know, uh, he just needs to be a little bit cleaner in his drops and, and be a little bit more disciplined in his drops in, in those situations. And, and those are things that, He's always worked hard on, and he'll go about working on those in practice. Um, you know, as, as it relates to the development of the defensive backs, that's why we hired Corey. You know, that, those are our expectations of Corey. He's got a lot of experience. He's in this business a long time, um, and, and he can impart that knowledge and that wisdom uh, of, of coaching, you know, uh, the cornerback position in particular in a manner that, uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to happen in time. And he's got a lot of young players there, and, and the veteran that he did, did have there is, is getting healthier and healthier. And, and we're seeing Zai really come you know, to uh, the forefront of, of the cornerback position for us. And um, so he's done a really nice job in, in what we've asked him to do. Yeah, Brian. Uh with Trey Dez, is there, uh, because of the injuries in the wide receiver frame, is there more consideration of trying to figure out how to get him on the field more in a wide receiver or slot role? There is. There is. And, and, and quite frankly, I think that that's, you know, uh, what we have to do. Um, you know, we're probably in a position now where, um, you know, watching him play, uh, you know, all of the complexities of playing the tight end position can be eliminated by, you know, getting him more in a wide receiver role. And I, and I think we're getting to that point where we made that, that decision that, that that has to happen. He's a talented player. We saw him on the, uh, the touchdown, how easy it is for him to flash his hands and catch the football. And he just gives us more versatility. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to see that moving forward. Brian, uh, uh, my Garrett, that's my running question was already asked. So I want to ask you about – when, when, when they rush the field like that, is that, is that scary at all? Or this is like your third one here. Yeah. You've got, you got enough state troopers and offensive linemen around you to feel uh, – Yeah, feel I okay. mean, I, look, I mean, it, it always is a result of a good thing. Um, and, and so, um, you know, from that perspective, um, you know, I, I guess your, your mindset is, okay, uh, that's good. But it's, it, it's not comfortable. Um, you know, you're in a, a mass of people and you're being, um, you know, moved through a crowd of people and you're worrying about somebody getting knocked down. And yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not something that you enjoy. Let's put it that way. You love the fact that you won the game. You love the fact that guys are, people are celebrating uh, an incredible victory. But the implications of what has to happen next is they're rushing you off the field and it, it quite frankly is is unsettling coach uh it seems like in the second half your receivers were able to get a lot more separation was a lot up because you're get, you guys just decided to and maybe not decided but just started attacking the middle of the field a little bit more as the game went along yeah, so it was a lot of two cover two, it, it, you know, it was a lot of two and two trails. So we needed time in the pocket and we needed to get our guys across the field. So, you know, you can attack them one of two ways. You can go vertical down the field 
or you can work your way across the field in, in a lot of two deep coverages. And, and this, was, this was getting across the field, essentially, and gaining separation. And that's kind of what you saw in the second half, is that we were working routes that were taking time to get across the field, but eventually they were getting open. Brian, you talked to post game about maybe getting some players back soon. Who would those kind of guys be that can maybe get back on the field here, potentially as soon as this weekend? Anybody? Well, you know, I hope to get a couple of receivers back at least. Um, you know, I think um, Daniels has got a really good chance uh, of being back. Um, so, and, and, you know, Chris is a day-to-day -day situation for us. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty certain that we'll, we'll augment the wide receiver position this week. I think that that's what um, I think we're most um, looking forward to is, is getting uh, some – some bodies back at that position. Well, no, that's one. Uh, but I, I, we're going to get some of the injured receivers. We're going to get somebody back, whether it's CJ or whether it's Chris. Somebody's coming back from, from one of those two guys. Over here. Um, this is about Garrett Nussmeyer's, I guess, mindset or mentality. And maybe you can reflect on the several years that you've got to know him. After the game, um, talking about the final drop in regulation, he, he said you know, that he was aware he'd been playing really badly, but we had a chance to win and I had to focus on that. Um, it sounds obvious, I think, to us sitting here now, but it, I don't know if it is as obvious to college-age kids in a high-stress, high-emotion environment in a football game like that. And in your experience, is it, or is it maybe indicative of something particular about him at this point in his career? Um, that, that he's able to put those behind him and move forward because he's not having a good game? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I would say that he is unique. Uh, you know, I'll go back to, uh, you know, Jaden's first year. You know, you know Jaden, you know, would, would process very well um, and, and, you know, knew if, if there were struggles – that he could fight through them. Um, you know, Garrett's in that first year of starting as well, um, but, but has the ability to have an awareness that, you know, I've, I've got to find a way to get through this. And on the sideline, he is talkative. He is um, always looking for solutions, like what can we do here? Um, versus the coverages that I'm seeing. And he'll say, I like this play. Can we come back to this? And, and so I just think he's always engaged looking for answers. And, and I think that that's what makes him unique. He, regardless of what has happened prior to, he's looking for success um, later in the game. And, and that's some of the plays that were called later were ones that, that he really – likes and, and feels comfortable with. And you could see by the way he threw the football, those are plays that, that he could throw with a blindfold on uh, because those are the ones that he feels comfortable with. Yeah, Brian, two Arkansas questions. First one is about uh, what kind of, I guess, influence has Bobby Petrino had on their offense? And secondly, is Arkansas's quarterback just, a, I guess, a more mature version of South Carolina's quarterback? as far as characteristics of what they do? Bobby Petrino makes a big difference in their offense. Um, it is uh, diverse in its running game. Uh, I don't know that I've seen as many schemes offensively in terms of, like, you can't rep all the run schemes that they have. I mean, it is diverse. So um, he has made a, a big difference in what they do offensively. Um, the quarterback is – a, a unique player in that, first of all, I mean, he is long speed as fast as anybody that we'll see. Um, so he's got great speed. He's got escape ability. Um, and I, I think he throws it better than the quarterback uh, from South Carolina. So th this is a guy that is a, a, a real threat. And you know, we're going to have to really do some things to take away um, what he likes to do. And, you know, this is a quarterback that 
um, when, when he's on, um, he's difficult to defend. So th this will be a great challenge for our group. Hey, Coach, what, what adjustments did Blake Baker make during the game or at halftime, if any, other than I, th I think he switched from man to man? Um, and just what did you think of his game plan as the week went on leading up to the game? Well, it didn't change very much other than we did not give them uh, a consistent look uh, at, at any time. We, we felt like the most important thing was – to mix coverages up. If, if we gave them a consistent look at anything, we felt like that was going to be the issue. Um, and so we, we wanted to mix up coverages. And I thought our guys did a really good job of holding the shell, which is, you know, most important. And then post snap getting into something else, which affected uh, the quarterback in terms of his decision making. And, and you saw on several occasions he, he held on to the football because he got something different post-snap. I think what Blake did a really good job is we, we had a number of check with me's. And in other words, they would check, we would check, and it became a bit of a chess match throughout the game as to who was going to get the last check in. And Sometimes they did, but sometimes we did as well. And so it was a chess match in the second half. And when you keep them off from scoring touchdowns, um, you know, obviously for two quarters and in, in overtime, you feel like you won that battle. Uh, right up front, uh, I got another Blake Baker question for you. Just, I'm curious if there's an example or two, whether it's at a practice or during the game on a sideline, just an interaction with a player or a position room that you've – really picked up on because it really does look like these players are buying into what he's been preaching since January, February, um, and, and just kind of the havoc that they create defensively. Just is there anything that comes to mind, uh, just how he's been able to relate to these guys and executing what, what you guys are asking of him? Yeah, so, you know, the, this, this all comes down to trusting the teaching, right? Um, so, Major Burns, I'll give you, for example, you know, ma ma Major's the, the easy pinata out there. Everybody likes to take a shot at Major Burns. Um, Major's playing a position that, that requires a lot of run fits that, you know, Harold Perkins had, right? He's really playing in a role where he has to run fit. Um, and, and you have to trust that teaching. And it was probably, it was, in my opinion, the first time where Major just trusted it. He just trusted, that's what I'm supposed to be, I'm going to go do it. And, and the success that he had was he just believes that what he's told to do is going to affect the outcome of the play. And, and he's, he's a really good example of that and just trusting it. And he, he probably had his best game because of it. Now, the kid makes a great catch. Those things happen. We're going to move on to the next play. But he, he's a great example of somebody trusting the teaching that he's getting. And he had great success because of it. Good. All right. Thank you.